السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, and peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad, the last messenger of God who was sent to humanity. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, dear viewers, one of the things that is being circulated around, that different religious zealous are using to convert people to their faith, to bring people within their fold, and I might add to fool people, into their fold are, is, is a miracle. One of the things that people are using to bring people within their fold is a miracle. Miracles are being used by different groups, different religions, claiming that somehow this is a sign from God, that their way, their understanding is the truth. Miracles have been around and have been used and we see it within history, throughout the history, throughout the literature, yeah, there's been references to miracles, miracles within the Christian faith, miracles way before the Christian faith, miracles even within Islam, and miracles just in general, you know, in the general sense. People have wanted, they've died, desired to, to have some kind of connection to the divine, to get a sign, some kind of a physical sign where their faith can be strengthened and know that this is the truth, that they're actually on the truth. Be it that there's an apparition in the sky, be it that there's someone speaking to them, be it that a certain prophet or a certain god or so on comes and talks to them or gives them a sign when they ask for it. And we will see some of the clips, inshallah, and I want to just give a disclaimer that we are in no way trying to portray or trying to use any kind of uh, disrespectful means. Okay, this is not it. We're just trying to put a point across. We are not trying to use, for example, music. We've taken some of the clips, okay, and we will put them in there in this, in this segment just to show you. And as Sheikh uh, Al-Islam Ibn Tamiyah says, that there's a difference between Sama'a and Istima, like between listening, uh, listening to something, between hearing something and listening to something. We're not here encouraging you to listen to music, but for the sake of the clips, the way we took them, that's how they came. Um, so just please um, listen, watch, watch them and try to understand what these clips are saying. We're in no way trying to disrespect um, prophets or anything like that by showing images, for example, of Isa والسلام, which are obviously not true representation, or his mother Maryam So please bear with us, please don't pass any judgment or ruling on us and this, try to stick with this uh, episode to understand really the depth because this is really hurting the people in general not just the Muslims but humanity at large <clears throat> people are putting their intellectual faculties on the side and they do not understand or try to understand these happenings or these apparitions and so on so let's look first and foremost at miracles what are miracles anyway well, there, within Islam, within the understanding of Islam, there are a few types of miracles. And number one, it is, there's a mujiza or something amazing that's a sign that's been given usually to a prophet. A mujiza is being given to a prophet. It's coupled with the prophethood. It's coupled with a message. It's coupled with an inspiration from God. And we find that in many of the prophets. We find Jesus, peace be upon him, being able to raise the dead by the will of God, not by His will, by the will of God. This is something very important. We find Moses with his staff being able to split the sea and so on, by the will of God again. We find Muhammad وسلم, peace and blessing be upon him, being able to feed thousands, okay, and water gushing from his hand, and different healings, uh, properties, and many other things that we find within Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. To be honest, a lot of times people say, what is the miracle of Prophet Muhammad? And we first and foremost say that it is the Qur'an. The Qur'an is the greatest miracle. And we engage and we ask everyone and we recommend everyone, all our viewers, to take a copy of the Qur'an. Go get a copy of the Qur'an from the library, from the bookstore. There are free available on the internet. And read it. To see why do we claim that the Qur'an is the greatest miracle. This is something very important. Second, there are something called karama, karamat. And these are 
certain things that are given or that happen that might be hard to explain or are out of the natural. And I'll give you some examples. However, these karamat can be given to righteous or non-righteous people. And they, you cannot follow these people and they're not given to prophets. Okay? And we cannot follow people based just on these karamat. The principle of Sharia, brothers and sisters, is that we follow these people based on how they follow Allah and His Messenger. Based on how they follow Allah and His Messenger. Based on how they follow Allah and His Messenger. Not based on just the miracle or just the, what's happening. If this miracle in any way or shape or form contradicts the Sharia of Islam, contradicts the Quran, the Sunnah, this is rejected totally as something from the devil. And as we know very well, even from the Bible, for our Christian viewers, that it's very easy for the devil to come up with such apparitions and miracles. It is very easy for the devil to come up and tempt people and misguide people and do certain so-called miracles. This is something that is present in the Bible, as we know and as Christians know very much. I want to show you now, let's go and watch, because the Muslims are not safe from this. So let, let me start, so I want to be as fair as possible. Let's start with the Muslims. Okay? Because a lot of times the Muslims themselves fall into these things. They get and start even inventing and seeing things where they are not. Seeing signs of Allah in the sky. Seeing signs of Allah on a goat or on, on, a, on a cow or something like that. So just a short clip for us to understand and to see just how Muslims have also taken this. You know, they're trying to compete now with the different religions in bringing so-called miracles. And we'll find that these miracles are really not there. And a lot of times there are fabrications. And we ask the Muslims not to refer to this. We ask the Muslims to go back to the deen, go back to the Quran, to see the real miracle which is Islam. So let's take a look at the following clip. As you have seen, I wanted to be very fair to see that even Muslims are trying to, and many times, and I'm not saying that there's no karamat, I'm not saying, even for example, when I became Muslim, before I became Muslim, I had a very impressive and amazing dream, okay? I did not use that as a proof for Islam, I used that as a beginning, something to search. I never used it that this is, Islam is the truth because I had a dream. I had a dream. Everyone has a dream. So we need to be very careful. Now, how do Christians use this concept of miracles? And this is where it's, it's the most, this is the most important piece. Because the Christians have really, really ridden this issue of miracles. That, you know, Jesus spoke to me. That God spoke to me. That this apparition or that, that I saw Mary crying. That Jesus crying blood. That this statue and that, you know... Um, our Lady Fatima in Portugal and so, so many other things that you can research and find people making pilgrimage um, as we will see one of our clips in Florida and in the US you know the statue of Mary crying people making pilgrimage to see it to reaffirm their faith and so on and so forth a lot of times people will be like well what's the explanation for it what's the explanation well let's first of all look at how Christians use it. Christians jump on this and right away they try to say that this is a miracle from God, this is a sign from God. They'll talk to people, of course, and a lot of times they use these miracles, especially born-again Christians, right? They'll say that you will see, you know, they have to, God will come, Jesus spoke to me, He appeared in a dream, He told me that I have to do this and that. I met many people saying that God speaks to me, like personally, I speak to God and God speaks to me every day, like I hear His voice. I met many people like that. So this is not something that is valid and we will see why. Christians use it a lot of times to, against Muslims, to convert them, to bring them into the folds of Christianity. And it has happened that many times the Muslims have fallen prey to. And you will ask, but how come? What's the issue? What's? Well, first and foremost, we need to understand what is the background of these so-called miracles, these so-called apparitions, these so-called apparitions of 
Jesus and so on coming to Muslims and telling them that you should become Christian or that you're saved. Or, you know, I've seen many movies put on by certain Christian missionaries, Arab missionaries, very professionally done, basically, you know, showing that how uh, Muslims have seen Jesus or have had a, you know, vision and they've changed their lives and so on and so forth. Now, do I necessarily say that these are lies, that they didn't happen? Not necessarily. A lot of times are, and we'll see. We'll see very easily uh, why. But a lot of times, uh, they're, not, they're not lies. They, these things actually happen. And you might ask, well, well, how come? What's the explanation for this? How come Jesus is coming? It's, you know, it's quite an interesting story. I heard one of the funniest stories I've ever heard. It was a Muslim making Salatul Istikhara, which is an Islamic okay, ritual, asking God for guidance and saying that I've seen Jesus in a dream so I converted to Islam because of the istikhara. And this is a total contradiction, a total nonsensical uh, thing as we can say. I've seen uh, myself, uh, Jesus in dreams, and I did not uh, convert to Christianity because I've seen him. Actually, uh, he was affirming Islam in my dreams. So you can't just base, base your life necessarily just on dreams. Dreams have a big importance even in Islam, but we know very well that that's not what we base our life on. We do not base our Sharia on dreams. Dreams can be an indication. Dreams can be uh, even a, a warning. Dreams can be a revelation, even as the Prophet said, of righteous people from revelation. This can be something that part of dreams. However, if it goes against the established facts in the Sharia, the established facts in the Quran and the Sunnah, this is rejected. And we know very well, we need to couple everything, we need to put everything in a package. The Prophet said, told us that dreams, many dreams are for shaitan. And that shaitan himself can take the form of many things except Prophet Muhammad Right? So this is one way to answer because a lot of things, well I saw Jesus. Well shaitan can take the shape of Jesus. Shaitan can take the shape of many different things and come to you and try to deceive you. Shaitan, will, the jinns are having basically a party with these people, with these apparitions, these statues, crying blood and so on and so forth. Shaitan is literally laughing at them and they're playing with these people who are spending money and traveling far and beyond to visit and see these things and reaffirm their faith in what? In shirk, in a principle that goes against their own book against the first commandment. So, this is not a rational thing. This is not a thing based on proof. And let's take a look at some of these clips of some of these so-called miracles that are happening and people are taking pilgrimages. People are going there, spending money to see a statue crying blood or a statue of Jesus having, you know, you know or Mary closing or opening her eyes and so on and so forth. So. Watch the clip, inshallah. It is not a stain. The, um, the black line is a marble streak that's underneath the white marble that is growing and longer and darker. <laughs> As you have seen uh, in the clip, that there's a lot of these apparitions. Now, as I said, Christians use this method to take Muslims away from Islam. Many times they just ask God, just ask Jesus. And the Muslims say, well, let me just try to ask Jesus. Let's see what. And then people say, oh, Jesus, if you're real, please show me, come into my life and save me or something. At that moment, you've automatically left Islam. The shaitan is taken over and he will come like Jesus. He will come and give you and grant you that request. Shaitan and his jinns, his army will come to you and they'll appear to you and they'll play on your emotions because you have already committed shirk, you have left Islam. So now you're on yourself. Now you are with shaitan. So shaitan is taking you, has come and appear to you and giving you a request and you say, Aha, you see, I've heard Sheikh Abdul Rahim Green told me that when he was driven in India by one of the guys, he was driven by an apostate, someone who has left Islam. 
And he said, he asked him, why did you left, leave Islam? He said, well, we couldn't have a child for a long time, my wife and I. And some priest told me, go and ask Jesus. So I asked Jesus and God gave us a child. And I say, this was where God has misled you. Why? Because you've asked Jesus. Because you have committed shirk. You couldn't have patience with the test that God has given you. So God has misguided. Does God misguide? Yes, God misguides, as He says in the Quran, the wrongdoers. Okay? The wrongdoers, the fasiqeen, those who are leaving the fold of Islam, those who are turning to other, those who couldn't have patience with what God had given us. Instead of having patience and accepting the qadr, the destiny of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have turned to other gods. They have turned to asking other than Allah and not being satisfied with what Allah has given. So Allah has granted and misled them and that way they have left Islam by their mistake. So this is being used a lot with apostates. And as we will see now in this next clip of this so-called person, so-called Muslim apostate who, have left, who has left Islam, we'll find a lot of times these Muslims have no understanding and no concept of the basics of Islam. Committing shirk and that's why they're being misguided. That's why they have these apparitions. That's why they have these so-called demons as we'll see in this clip coming to them. And we will find that this is, and especially in this clip, is perfect. Because we find shaitan all over this boy. Shaitan, the devil and his jinn army are all over this guy who has committed shirk, who has asked Jesus, who has asked someone other than Allah. Who even in Islam used to go to a grave. And you can see in the clip that he's making dua to a grave which is not allowed in Islam. You don't ask and you make dua towards a grave or to a grave or to the dead person in the grave. And that's why these people are misguided. That's why shayateen, the devils, have taken over and are playing. They're literally having a blast, a party, a field day with these people, with their apparitions. They're jumping up and down and enjoying themselves with these people thinking that God is giving them a sign. While they are being misled, they are being misguided. They are going against the first principle in their own faith, the first commandment in their own faith. They're going against the principle of La ilaha illallah within Islam. So watch the following clip. To reaching Allah was to of Islam and follow the sayings of um, Muhammad, which are the hadiths. Growing up, I was um, in a youth. Type, let's move to another aspect of this topic. And that is, well, Christians are claiming that they have miracles, that they're having dreams. Muslims are claiming that they're having dreams that they've seen Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, or they've seen even Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa or they've seen this person or that person, righteous people, in their dreams, reaffirming their faith. The Christians say, we saw Jesus, we saw this and that, reaffirming our faith. The Hindus are also coming, and they're saying that they're having miracles, that this statue is drinking milk, this statue is opening their, uh, its, its eyes, this miracle and that miracle. Just check on YouTube, Hindu miracles. And watch the following clip to see how the devils are playing again with these people. They're not just playing within the Christians, within the statue of Mary or with the, with the statue of Jesus. They're playing with their shirk, with their idols, bringing them closer and more firm and more you know, convinced about the wrong that they're in because they have wronged themselves from the beginning. They have gone, they have left their faculties of intellect and they have gone into believing these kind of nonsense. That statues are opening their eyes. That statues are actually eating the food. Come on, how God in need of sustenance? This is totally ludicrous. Watch the following clip and see. So again, we ask, who has the truth? Can we base it based on these so-called miracles? This statue, that statue, this place, oh, we've seen this, the apparition, Mary appeared to me, Jesus appeared to me, uh, Krishna appeared to me, Vishnu appeared to me, and so on, uh, Abu Bakr appeared to me, Abdul Qadir Jalani appeared to me, or so on and so forth. Who? Many other faiths we find that the people are making pilgrimage, not just the Hindu, the Christians, the Muslims, but many other have had the miracles have been throughout the literature, throughout the history, present in almost every culture. So who's got, the, who's got it right? 
Who's got it right? Who can say, who can claim that, well, you know, our miracles are correct? Actually, as I've said before, it is the devil. It is the misguidance of, that these people are suffering from, that the devils have been able to take advantage and really enjoy themselves in misguiding these people, in throwing, throwing them off the right way because they themselves have violated the basics of faith, the basic commandments of God that He has given. They themselves have violated, have gone against the faculty of intellect that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God, the Creator, have provided these people with. They have left their faculties of intellect and they have gone into their culture, indoctrinations, thinking that idols are eating, they're closing their eyes, that they're crying blood and somehow they reaffirm their faith and go deeper and deeper into this polytheism and into this nonsensical type of behavior. Now, let us look at, and this would probably wrap up and give you a, a, an idea, an interesting idea about how things happen. And this is a story within Islam. Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jalani, Abdul Qadir Jalani was a great scholar. One time he had a vision, an apparition came to him. And he, he thought, it's a claim that it is Allah on a throne. And it said, Ya Abdul Qadir, no more prayer, no more fasting. You are excused. It was very, very vivid. He, he couldn't, you know, but it was something actually appeared to him. But as soon as that apparition said, no more prayer, no more fasting, Sheikh Abdul Qadir, with his God-given brain, has said, disappear from me, go away from me, O enemy of Allah. And shaitan showed his true face. Shaitan showed his true face. It was the devil. And he said, I have misled so many people before today, before you, by this. So many close, righteous people. And you have somehow, you were able to defeat me. SubhanAllah. So we can see that a lot of times, these so-called apparitions, these so-called people seeing or coming or having miracles, healing and so on, we find that a lot of times, are just supernatural things that are either a cause of the misguidance that they've suffered and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let them be misguided and misguided or misguidance from the devils as Allah left them, the devils have taken over because they have committed shirk, they have violated the basic principles of Islam. People say, well Allah misguides, the shaitan misguides, what's happening here? First and foremost, you need to understand, brothers and sisters, people, as soon as you violate the, the rules and guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As soon as you put your intellect on a hook, you put it aside. As soon as you do not follow the truth, the basics, very easy concepts, Allah will misguide. Allah will leave you into your misguidance. Allah will actually put you more into misguidance because of you, you denying the clear, the clear evidence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something that cannot, undeniable. Only a wrongdoer, only a fasik can do that. If this person repents, realizes their mistake, and comes back to the end, of course Allah is always willing to accept them back. But these people go deeper and deeper. These people go more and more into it. Very simple concept. And then the shayateen take over this and just misguide them more and more and more. And they play on it. And they make them think that they are actually seeing all these miracles while the basic concepts are still in front of them. La ilaha illallah. La tushrik bishay. Don't associate anything with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have everything in front of them. Yet they're still claiming they're on the right path. So of course Allah will misguide them. Another thing that I want to leave you with, there was another story of a scholar who was walking by a village and he saw someone jumping off the roof of the masjid and nothing would happen to him. And people started following this person, gathering around this person, claiming that he is a, a miraculous person, he is a saint. As soon as the sheikh, knowledgeable, saw this person jumping from the roof, he said, Subhanallah, he praised Allah. As soon as he has said that, the jinn flew out of this so-called miraculous man and as he hit the ground, he died. So again, just a very basic story of how people can be easily fooled. 
remember the principle is that you follow Allah and His Messenger. You follow the proofs, the proofs of ex the existence of God, the proofs of the truth. And this is what we call people to. People need to look at the proof. Everyone's claiming miracles, but who's got the right one? Who's got the right proof? So we as Muslims are inviting people not to be deceived by this miracle, including Muslims, but to actually look at the proofs of God, at the Word of God. How can you claim you have miracles and you're seeing things while the word, your so-called Word of God is suffering contradictions and suffering from major, major corruptions? People need to look at the basic principles of the faith. People need to look at the rational proofs of the faith. They need to examine the Word of God. Is this the Word of God? Is this perfect? Or can I just go based on, oh, I found a cross on the street, therefore I have to be Christian. Or I've seen Mary appearing to me, or Jesus, or Abdul Qadir Jalani, or something like that. So I have to be a certain way or a certain way. So this is what we call people to. We call people to examine. We call people to read the Quran. We call people to examine the so-called Word of God to see where is the truth and make based on that of course connection with God prayer for guidance prayer for signs and for for uh, for guidance towards the truth towards real signs that are in line with the basic concepts of reality with the basic concepts of this the, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the basic concept of God how he created things and how he has ordained this universe this is what we call to. And if people violate the basic rule, and I want to clarify this again, the basic rules of Islam, they will be misguided. They will be misguided because the basics of Islam are so simple. So Allah, as He says, that Allah guides many and He misguides many, but He does not misguide except the wrongdoers. Those who continue to wrong themselves, to make shirk, to ask other than Allah, and so on and so forth. They keep on and on. And Allah has given him chance after chance after chance. And of course, in his wisdom, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that these people will not turn back. So he misguides them, and the shayateen take over, and they get more and more and more misguided with so-called miracles, healings, as we see with Benihin, and so on. And ca calling people to his group, by supposedly healing them. And we see what a masquerade and a charade. What a party of devils that these people are. So I leave you in the, I would say, quite amusing yet sad company of these people who are claiming miracles in the name of God and trying to bring people within their fold while putting the proofs of God away shunning them away and shunning their own intellect and God-given brain away. We thank you for following with us. We also encourage you to visit our website at www.letmeturnthetables.com and www.islamdunktv.com to see article, to read articles, uh, academic articles refuting missionary attacks, refuting different attacks in Islam, academic papers, looking at the so-called um, issues that people have with Islam. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. God healed him. Did you see God healed this man's knee? Had it nine years. The pain left. You can bend the knee. You're healed. I said you bend the knee. I'd rather die than lie. <laughs>
زين للناس حب الشهوات من النساء والبنين والقناطير المقنطرة والقناطير المقنطرة من الذهب والفضة والخيل. You can bend the knee. You're healed.